It's another edition of the Trading Tips Video Newsletter, teaching you how to become a successful trader today. This video newsletter is brought to you by PortfolioCrafter.com. Welcome to this edition of the TradingTips.com video newsletter. In this episode, we'll be looking at Elliott Waves and the Elliott Wave Theory. Without further ado, let's begin. Ralph Nelson Elliott was an accountant, but he did a lot more than just balance the books and file income tax reports. In fact, Elliott was one of the most brilliant mathematicians the stock market has ever seen, and he developed the Elliott Wave Theory. The theory is basically that market prices unfold in specific and predictable patterns, and these patterns are called Elliott Waves today. Elliott's theory was groundbreaking at the time in the 1920s. Back then, people thought there was no predictability to the market and market prices. Markets were chaotic, but Elliott was a student of the then groundbreaking theory of mass psychology. Psychology itself was you know, fairly new at the time. And he theorized that mass psychology affected how market participants behaved to such a degree that order could be stilled from the seeming chaos of the stock market. Fractals. Fractals are mathematical structures that infinitely repeat themselves on smaller and smaller scales. They appear in nature, such as this example of a fractal in nature on this slide. Elliott found these patterns were evident in stocks, too, and subsequent technical analysts have found them in all financial markets. Elliott Waves gained popularity in the 1970s when A.J. Frost and Robert R. Prechter published their classic book, The Elliott Wave Principle, The Key to Stock Market Profits. The basics of Elliott Wave Theory can be distilled down to five points. One, every action has a reaction. Two, five waves move in the direction of the trend, and then three corrective waves move in an opposite direction. Three, the five main trend waves followed by the three collective waves is called a 5-3 move. And again, this is a com uh, completes a cycle. Four, the 5-3 move then becomes two subdivisions of the next higher 5-3 wave. And five, the 5-3 pattern remains constant even as the time span of each wave varies. Okay, let's move on. This is a simple drawing demonstrating an Elliott wave. The first five waves labeled in black follow an uptrend. These are called impulse waves. The next three waves labeled in red are the corrective waves. The entire 5-3 pattern or 5-3 move represents the completion of a cycle. But Elliott waves are infinitely repeating. Here's a chart that shows a 5-3 pattern playing out in smaller waves over and over again. And in the previous examples, the Elliott waves have been bullish, but they can be bearish too. Uh, in this case, the five main trend waves trend lower, while the three corrective ones are going to be the investment recovering, so they're going to be going higher. Here's a real-life example of the S&P 500 playing out a bearish Elliott Wave 5-3 move. As we said earlier, Elliott Waves repeat infinitely. The discoverer of Elliott Waves, Ralph Nelson Elliott, identified several scales on which Elliott Waves make themselves known. There's the Grand Super Cycle, which is multi-century, the Super Cycle, which is multi-decade, a Cycle, which is one or more years, Primary, several months to a few years, Intermediate, weeks to months, Minor, weeks, Minute, days, Minuet, hours, and Sub-Minuet, minutes. According to Elliott Wave Theory, stocks and other investments replay these 5-3 moves on all these scales, from Grand Super Cycle for many centuries down to the sub-minuet of minutely waves. Day traders want to take note of this because they can obviously use the minor, minute, uh, and minuet and sub-minuet Elliott Waves in determining when to buy and sell on a very short-term basis. Now, I'm going to take a deeper look at the different waves. Now, the first five waves, of course, are called the uh, dominant trend, and these are called impulse waves. 
Wave one is rarely obvious when it's just getting going. Uh, this is the first wave of a, and we're going to talk about these as if it's a bullish cycle and you, if you want to apply it to a bearish cycle, you'll have to just reverse everything. But in a bullish cycle, the first wave begins. News is typically negative. Earnings are revised lower. Consumer and investment sentiment surveys are not strong. Implied volatility in the options market is high. Wave two of a bullish cycle is a, a bearish wave. But its low can never extend below the starting point of wave one. Typically, news is still bad here. Wave three is normally the most powerful wave in the trend, at least in most markets. Studies do show that wave five tends to be the strongest in commodities markets for whatever reason. Anyway, the news is starting to turn positive during wave three, and sentiment surveys turn bullish too. An interesting thing is that wave three often extends beyond wave one by 61.8%, or a ratio of 1.618 to 1, and this is an important number in the Fibonacci sequence. Wave 4 corrects the over-exuberance of Wave 3, in keeping with the Fibonacci relationships, uh, Wave 4 normally gives back no more than 38.2% of Wave 3. Wave 4 is a good place to buy, because Wave 5 is the giant breakout, and Wave 5 is the final wave of that dominant trend. It's the final, purely bullish wave of the 5-3 move. It normally apexes at the highest point of the cycle. Now we're gonna get into the corrective trend, and here we've uh, numbered, we've marked the waves A, B, and C instead of one, two, and three. Wave A corrections are normally harder to spot than in the dominant trend. In the wave A of a bullish cycle, news is normally still bullish, and many analysts ignore the Elliott wave theory and think that happy days are there forever. Wave B, here prices reverse higher, but volume is lower than in the previous wave. This shows you're in the corrective part of the, of the trend. And wave C, and with wave C, it now becomes obvious that you're in a bearish trend. And wave C normally extends that magic number of 68.1% lower than wave A. Elliott waves involve some extremely high level math, and it's really amazing that they were discovered in the 1920s. It shows what people could do when they put their minds to it. But now we have cell phones that pack the computing power of what used to take a warehouse, uh, you know, size mainframe, couldn't even do that much. Elliott waves are infinite and repetitive at smaller and smaller scales, and that's why they're perfect for day traders, because they're just as, just as or nearly as reliable over a short time period as over a longer time periods, and Regardless if you're a math whiz or not, you can definitely use Elliott Waves with your trading software or even on some websites. We hope you've enjoyed this TradingTips.com video newsletter. Thanks for watching and good trading. This video newsletter has been brought to you by Portfolio Crafter. Manny Backus designed Portfolio Crafter to be one of the easiest trading systems available on the web today. But don't take our word for it. Visit www.portfoliocrafter.com and access the free special report. It will show you how you can place profit-rich stock trades in just 15 minutes a week. Read the free report and you'll understand how the easy money's made markets. To access the free report, visit PortfolioCrafter.com. Portfolio Crafter, another market-beating investment service from Wealthpire. Take control of your financial destiny. View more Trading Tips videos. Visit TradingTips.com. Sign up for our free video newsletters and become a successful trader today.